Welcome back to my beginning TDD series. We ended up with this list of T implementation in the last video because we wrote our first test. But as we can see, this is clearly not the correct implementation that we want, but is actually an implementation that makes the test green, which is in the end an indicator that the test method is too vague. That is, it only states that if 42 is added to an empty list of ints, the count should be one. But this isn't exactly what we want to happen to the count property when items are added to a collection. And that's why I will transform this test to better state what should actually happen. I therefore use the theory attribute and a theory in xunit.net is a parameterized test method that can run multiple times with different values for the parameters. And thus I now have to change the test method body to use the items to add parameter. I add all of the items in that very array to my test target and check if the count corresponds to the length of the array. The last thing to do before running the tests again is to provide values for the parameter and this can be done with the member data attribute which specifies the name of a public static field or a public static property. Here in this case, it's count test data for add. This field or property must be of type I enumerable of object array, where the outer I enumerable holds the parameter arrays for all the runs. And this means that the count of the outer collection is equal to the number of runs of my first test. And because I enumerable of T resides in the system collections generic namespace, which I cannot use because of the name conflict with the .NET list of T implementation, I add a specific using declaration called test data at the top to circumvent this problem. The inner object arrays actually hold the parameter values for a single run. In my case, I only have one parameter value, which is an integer array, but you can easily imagine test methods with several parameters and how you would have to uh, adjust the inner object arrays accordingly. Yeah, and now I have the ability to run my test again, and we can see that this very test method is actually run three times instead of one, and all of them fail. That is why I have to transform the implementation of list of t and the easiest implementation is now the correct one. I cannot play devil's advocate in any other way and that's why I introduce a field called count that I use to keep track of how many items were added to my list. And when I run my tests now I see that all of them pass. And now I can refactor my code uh, here I will rename the test method to better reflect what I'm actually testing. This helps with defect localization later when this specific test method would fail. So I just have to look at the name of the method, not actually the body of code um, that is executed when this test method runs to gain an understanding of what went wrong. So I would advise you to actually use long test method names that really specify what's happening in them. At the end, I commit my changes to the Git repository and because I forgot to add the NuGet package folders to the Git ignore file, I'll do that first. And I delete the Git attributes file because I don't need it for this repository. When I commit my staged files, I provide a sensible phrase in the commit message so I can easily retrieve it later when I'm looking at the history of the repository. It's just the same thing as with naming test methods properly. You can easily identify what you have done in a specific commit if you give it a proper message. And that's it for this video. We ran through the whole red-green refactor commit cycle of TDD once. We transformed the test so that the devil's advocate had to provide a correct implementation that made all the tests actually green. And we refactored 
the name of the test method and committed the changes to the repository afterwards. And I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope to see you again in the next one. See you soon.